Hey folks, Greg Koch here. We're at NAMM 2017. I'm here with the mighty Pete Thorne, guitar You're, player extraordinaire. He's a natural on camera. I love it. <laughs> I've been wanting to meet this guy for so long. Likewise, and here we fan, are. So here we are. It's very exciting. Yeah. Very excited to talk to you about your new Savage Sir guitar. Yes. Tell us. Well, Tell us the ways. Basically, what I set out to do was do a kind of like a mahogany body, mahogany neck, rosewood board, maple top, that sort of thing but do it in a 25.5 uh, scale guitar. I always love the look of the Sir standard. Um, it always, uh, I seem to remember, you know, even back with the Pensa Sir guitars in the uh, in the 80s, I remember like, I think his was a carb top, but I remember Peter Frampton playing one, right. and, like, and the Knopfler, right. the Knopfler looking ones, you know. So I always like the kind of like this, yeah, sort yeah. of sharp edge thing. So when we set about doing this, I was like, okay, I knew I wanted the scrape binding, because that's just sexy. And basically the mahogany maple combo with the mahogany neck rosewood board, that whole thing. Uh, and then as far as the pickups go, we had started working on a set of pickups a long time ago where I, I kind of wanted them to be like the ultimate PAF. Yeah, yeah. Like old school clarity. Right. Um, where, where, you know, humbuckers weren't just like a mid bomb. Exactly. Like, they, they were like yeah, meaty sounding single uh, uh, meaty yeah. sounding single coils but with no no noise, right? Exactly, that's it. And where you could get balance in all the sort of traditional three positions. Right. Um, and so this is actually a five position switch. You can get some tap positions and stuff cool. as well. But in, even just in the standard kind of humbucking, you know, this pickup, these two combined, and this pickup and full sort of humbucking, uh, there's a ton of balance and clarity. That's what we went for. Was for it, like so that you can set your amp and it's like, you know, oh, the bridge pickup sounds great. Oh, the neck pickup sounds woolly. I didn't want that. I wanted right. it to be like very balanced in all three positions. So these are the thorn buckers in this guitar. And that's what I like it. That's what that's all about. And then there's a uh, push pull. This goes series parallel. Okay. In there. So it's just super versatile. Yeah. A ton of ton of range. Bridge is a Goto 510. Uh, we use the medium frets that are similar to kind of like what I think of as a 6105 right. size stainless steel. And yeah, I just it was a guitar that I spec'd out a few years ago, and they made it for me, and I started taking it out on the road. And this whole last year in France, it really became. I, I, I had another Sir Classic out, but for a while I even just stopped using that. It's a great guitar, but I just started using this because I thought, I've never done a touring gig where I can just play one guitar all right. day, the whole show. And that was really fun. So. Awesome. So I love it. And we decided to do a, you know, the original black one with the red back, which I think is sexy and kind of classy. Right. Totally. But what were we, we going to do for another color choice? Well, I just thought classic, kind of gold top. Awesome. Then, you know, Beautiful. Tin, so. That's it. And the other simple thing. Simple elegance. Simple elegance, exactly. Exactly. I wanted to be classy but rock and roll. You know? Right on. Not too flashy, but just flashy enough. Sir has never done this before either, which is rings. You know, this is very basic, but I, I, it lends a different look to the guitar, I think. It gives it some, a little something special. So, cool. That's it. Looks awesome. Thank you. It's like something I'd like to tear up. I wish you would. I'd now, love to uh, hear that. now, you have an amplification device as well? Yeah, yeah. So I've got my PT100 uh, it's over here. This has been my main touring amp and studio amp for uh, he's going on. Well, let's see, the original PT100 was 2008. Okay. That was when the amps were so custom audio labeled amps. We did a redesign when it went to the, the Sir logo. Okay. And basically my original custom audio in 2008 was a terrific amp, but we were doing a bunch of mods you know, over the years and changing things and stuff like that. And eventually we thought, all right, let's put all this stuff into the new design. So when we switched it over to the Sir logo, Put all those new mods and stuff into the amp, and essentially it's a uh, it's a three-channel design. You got a killer American clean, and then uh, that you know great British kind of crunch on two and three. There's a MOSFET boost in the front end that's uh, uh, basically like almost like having a, a pedal built into the amp. Okay. But it's of course running at super high voltage, you know, like 250 volts, so it just melts with the amp when you turn on the boost. And the boost is usable across all three channels. So you really, uh, with the foot switch, you've got six. <laughs> the foot switch you've got, um, I hope I didn't screw up your mic, sorry. Uh, it's got sw uh, six uh, switchable levels of gain with the, with the boost and the three channels. So there's just a ton of range without even needing pedals and stuff like that. There. Let me ask you this, that's a good yeah. question. Now, obviously, you play all these different pedals. Yeah. Uh, that people want to check out some for, you know, demos and so on and so forth. Yeah. How much, or what would you say to somebody who says, well, how much do you use a pedal for overdrive and how much do you use an amp? Yeah. When and why? When and why. Okay, that's a great question. Because I actually do use overdrives with channel one quite a bit. Okay. When I need an alternate, like I need it to sound like tweet, or I want it to sound like that barely breaking up sort of 
like an AC30 or something, you know, and I need to simulate that, approximate that somehow. Then I'll use a drive into channel one for that. But when I'm just doing the straight up clean or straight up kind of British crunch thing, that's all amp gain for me. Got it. Yeah. And now do you like to do the effects loop with the delays or do you I like do. To, Okay. Yeah. I like them in front and more and more I like them in front these days. You know, okay. you go back and forth, but that kind of, they're so vibey in front. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out a way on my main pedal board that I can incorporate a, a, just a cool sounding analog delay in front of the amp. Right. But I use two of these in stereo uh, when I'm on tour and I do the thing where I you know, come out of the effects loop and send out to my pedal board and then I have some stereo effects on the board. I have Got like it. H9, Strime and Timeline, that kind of thing. Uh, and I come back into two heads, the returns of this one and then one more. And I got stereo. So. Excellent. Yeah. And are you able to crank it when you go live? Are you, you know how it is sometimes you get to, in a situation where you're gigging, they're like, we want no noise from the yeah, stage yeah. at all. What do you do in that situation? Uh, well, I did a tour in 2013 in France with a pop artist, actually, a singer named Lynn Farmer, and that was one of those situations. They didn't want any noise. It was more, actually, really, not so much about the noise, but it was about the stage. It was a stage with moving risers and stuff, and at times we were up super high, and then the stage comes down, and it's like, they wanted no, they wanted a clean stage, and there was dancers incorporated in the show and all that, so they didn't want a bunch of amps. So I just use load boxes. Okay. And, yeah, and, and I use, you know, uh, impulse responses for speaker simulation. Okay. Loaded in a two-note torpedo live, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And I actually use uh, Sur reactive loads for load boxes. So I load down the heads and, you know, so there's no cabs. And ah. uh, I did a whole tour like that with no cabinets and just, just in-ears and that kind of so thing. So you're still using the amp, but it's just yeah. speaker simulated. Exactly, yeah. So you're kind of modeling the back end. This Got speaker it. speaker and microphone sounds. But if I can, I love to have a cabinet. Right. So, um, you know, it's the last two tours I've done, the Japanese artist Yoshi Nagabuchi, and also uh, with uh, Michel Polnareff, the tour I just did in French, I was able to have cab ones. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. yeah. Feel the power. Feel the power. Do you like to rock? Come on. Oh, my Anybody God. remember rock and roll? Exactly. And we get people come up to you going, you know, it's really loud. It's like, who do you think you booked in here? It's right, like, right, right. Like, even with Michelle, actually, it was funny because they were they were thinking about no cabs or cabs way at the back of the stage and stuff, or you know maybe just you know a little bit of guitar on the monitor. And I said, can I just try a cab on stage to see if it bothers anybody? And they were like, okay. And so put a cab out there, and all night long I turned out I'm leaning into that thing, yeah. feed back, and it's like God, this should be like a drag if I didn't have this. Right. You know, it depends on the gig. Sometimes you don't need it, but right. it's nice to have. It's so. nice to feel the power. Yeah, the power of rock. And the majesty of roll. <laughs> Can you oh, dig it? All right, man. folks, thank you so much yeah. for talking to us, Pete. Really you appreciate bet. it. Real Great to finally you. meet you. Yeah. Greg Cock for Wildwood Guitars here at NAMM 2017. Out. <laughs>